today's webinar is on a dictionary of national biography. And what I'm going to do, I'm simply going to show you from the beginning how to access uh, with your library card, because I hope you do have your library cards, but you can access national biography, uh, dictionary of national biography from home. So you don't need to move any uh, to go to the library to do so. Right. And I'm going to share my screen. This is the only screen, the only uh, URL, the only web, um, web address you need to remember. You need to log on to Medway Libraries. That's all. That's the screen that you are getting when you go to the Medway Council's libraries. That's the first screen. As we scroll down, you can see in the middle online library services. And in the middle there, there's family history. We click on that. That brings us to the family history page. We've got three uh, databases here, three resources, but today we're going to concentrate on the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography. So we'll click on that one. That's the, uh, that's what it looks like, okay, the page. Now, for you to access it from home, what you need to do, you need to sign in with your library card. Okay, I've got this library card. I'm signing in. And you'll get it no matter whether you are during the pandemic, not with uh, outside the pandemic, you'll always have this access to, the, uh, to this resource. Okay, you'll, uh, at the moment you have Medway Libraries, which is fantastic. Sometimes you can get a list of authorities and Medway Libraries will be within that list of authorities. So we click on that and we get exactly the same screen, but now you can get to full articles and absolutely everything that is on that database. Okay, uh, usually what I find, as with every single new resource that I approach, it's, I find it really intimidating and overwhelming because there are so many options. We are bombarded with various bits of information. You've got all sorts of link, links here, as you can see, uh, podcasts, tweets, etc., etc. It's all fabulous. Uh, but it's very, very disconcerting. I find it very disconcerting, especially if I only need to find something specific. And, or even if I don't need to find something specific, but if I have a clear idea what subject I'm looking for, what ex not the person, but a subject. So my approach is... Ignore everything that they try to convey here and use uh, the search. Now, there are various options how we can use this uh, resource for our research. Obviously, if we know the name of the person we're looking for, we we'll, can just type the name in the box, in the search box. Well, one of the local characters you probably know had an a, a there were two of them. They had the surname of Thorndike. That's what I'm typing, and let's have a look what we're getting. Okay, we'll take a little bit of time. Here we are. So we get four results. Lucky for us, we've got. Arthur Russell, who was an actor and writer. We've got Sybil Thorndike, famous actress. Okay, there, there's more information about her as, again. 
And as you can see, the first one tells us that it's an image. So we've got a picture. And the second one is pickle. And we have uh, somebody from this 16th and 17th century biblical scholar and theologian. Uh, no idea who he is. I was looking for Dame Sybil Thorndike. And because we logged in with the library card, we get the full article, including the image. And you have absolutely everything what you would like to know with the sources that information derives from. So it is a reliable source. It also gives you more links if you want to pursue it. For example, if you're doing some serious research with a view of writing a book. Uh, and all kinds of other pieces of information, even including the wealth of at death. Um, if you would like to save this article, you can save it, you can view it in PDF format, you can, uh, so, uh, it gives you an idea how to cite it if you're writing something. And uh, I always find it's a good idea to write references where I get my information from, uh, simply because if I need, ever need to go back, I know where, where that came from. I don't need to scramble around. And you can email it to yourself. Okay. So I'll go back to the beginning. Right. That's fantastic if we know who precisely we're looking for. Well, because I was looking for Sybil Thorndike. I could have put Thorndike, Sybil, and it would, would have come up with two results, her image and the article. Uh, but I just expanded on that. Uh, we can also have a look and browse the dictionary. Uh, have a look at occupations. Uh, this year, for example, is a, considered to be a year of nursing. So we can have a look. We can narrow it down and have a look who was connected, which characters are connected to medicine and health. But there are various options, as you can see. Uh, OK, so altogether we have almost 4,000 results which is quite a lot. However, as this uh, webinar is about local history, we can try and narrow down the results. For example, we can modify our search. And this is a very useful bit because we can, you can, uh, you can see that there are uh, arrows going up and down. If we click on that, we don't exactly have the, not only have the article title, which is basically the name of the person, but we have all sorts of other options. One of the options is place mentioned. So what have we done so far? We are looking at somebody who is connected to medicine and health, but also narrowing it down even more to a place, shall we say, Chatham. We can add mo more terms, or we can just leave it at that and see how many articles, how many, how many results we get. So we click on update. We'll give it a bit of time. OK, we have 41 results. 
and out of them we have 41 articles. As we can see, there is a format, there is a type, there are biographical articles, and we have 11 articles with images. More than that, if we scroll down, we, we can see that we have, out of those 41 people, we have 37 males and 4 females. And to be truthful, I would skip the last bit. Otherwise, we'll get into too much complication. And again, let's just, for the sake of it, have a look at the first one. Edkin Sir William, he was a pathologist uh, in the 19th century. You can see immediately in, uh, in this small extract that he was connected to Chatham. Fort Pitt, and if we click and give it a, another minute, a, oh, half a minute even, okay, we get, uh, okay, that's a much shorter article, but it's still an article, it gives you an idea, uh, and or at the very least, it gives you a start. If, for example, you are looking to continue with search about him. And again, we've got the sources, we've got which archives, and uh, again, we get information, wealth, and death, and other resources like National Archives. Alternatively, we can look at the religious affiliation if we would like to uh, narrow it down instead of occupation would like to narrow it down via some religious we can do that or we can simply and again uh, I would suggest we always go back to the beginning to the um, landing page to the home page we can simply do it this way if you want to do a sweeping search uh, we go to advanced search and it brings us to the same column on the left which allows us to search full text to look the person's name mentioned aristocratic title and place mentioned to be truthful uh, I even wealth of death if you want to see how many people had two thousand pounds when they died feel free to, uh, to check that uh, I normally use place mentioned and full text simply because my uh, my search is normally pretty broad. Well, let's have a look at the... Let's try and answer a, an interesting question like... Who was the actor and singer who made their professional debut at Chatham Music Hall in 1914? That's a pretty complicated question, but we can just divide it into the important bits, into the words which will help us, keywords which will help us to find the right answer. Okay. We do have an actor and singer, so we can narrow it down, or we cannot bother with it. It's entirely up to you we can simply go for full text and put the word actor. Then we add another term, which means the search engine will have to find both terms in the same article in order to give you the result. What else is important? 
Well, the place is important because it's Chatham. We'll add another term because we can. We also know that the actor and singer was in music hall. And again, we'll use the full text because it will be in uh, music hall will be mentioned in the article, in the full text of the article. It is possible to use not just one word, but two, if they, if they are connected like music hall, but I, I would suggest not use more than two words together. We can also add a date because, and again, it will be in the full text, and I said 1914. And let's see what happens. I cannot guarantee anything, but let's see what whether we'll get. OK. That is interesting. Because here we get two results. But do we have 1914? Right. We've got Peter Rogers, who was born in 1914 at 114 Raynham Road, Chatham. Well, that doesn't help, does it? So something we've done was not right. If that happens, and that might happen a lot, and it's perfectly fine, we need to widen our search. And to widen our search, I would suggest, okay, uh, also I need to digress a little bit. What does that mean? That means that the search engine found that all these words like Chatham, actor, Music Hall and 1914 were in the article, in each article, but it doesn't answer our question. They are not connected the way we want it. So what we'll do, as I said, we'll narrow, uh, well, sorry, we'll widen the, the, the search. Okay, let's see whether this helps and how many we get. Okay, we got nine results. So we've got Butler Josephine allowed a Chatham prostitute to deliver a powerful denunciation. That doesn't help. Chatham House is not Chatham as a town. There's, we've got Again, we've got Dickens. I don't think he, having died in 1870, he made any debut as an actor in 1914. Okay, Chatham Barracks, Baronet. Okay, here we go. We've got Lily Beatrice Gladys, actress and singer. Chatham Music Hall, 1914, that she made her professional stage debut. Sounds about right. That's the answer to our question. We get the full article <clears throat> with all the information and an image. Okay, here we've got nine results, and nine results out of which one is the result that we need is perfectly fine. What you need to look out for is when you get too many results, if you get more than 10 results, 
that means you need to narrow it down. Well, it's a, obviously a rule of thumb. If you have too few results, like we had two results, which didn't answer any of our questions, you need to widen the search. You need to remove one of the keywords. And that's basically it. So we found our search, we found our information, we can now do whatever we want with it. And then we can continue.